All right, welcome back, everybody. Okay, so we have one more episode to complete our first notes uh, CRUD app or resource, if you like. And then after that, we can move on to sessions and authentication, which should be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's dig in right now. If I switch to my browser, here's our notes section. And yeah, we can create an example notes and that works fine. We can view all of them. We can view a specific note. We can delete a note, but yeah, we can't yet edit and update a note. And that's what we will do in this episode. All right, so let's go into our browser and yeah, let's do this. Maybe we can actually, if I switch back real quick, maybe we can reuse uh, this form here. Okay, so this is the create page. So I will go into views, notes, create, and I'm gonna copy and duplicate this and we will call it uh, edit.view. Okay, so now if I go into, actually let's start at the route level. Let's say listen for, let's grab this one right here. Listen for slash note slash edit and that will load a controller called notes slash edit. All right, that's our next step, create the controller. So once again, let's take something we already have and duplicate it, and I will call it edit.php. And yeah, at least initially to make sure this is working, I often do this. Let's just echo hello and see if we get anything in the browser. Okay, so let's give this, uh, actually let's go into a specific note and then update the URI to be note slash edit. All right, and sure enough, we are hitting that controller. Okay, so let's switch back. And yeah, let's think about what we need to do. We want to load a view to edit an existing uh, note. We've already created that view. The heading will be edit note. And yeah, let's just leave it like that, come back and refresh the page. And there we go. Okay. So now, of course, I need a link to edit that note. So maybe when we show it, yeah, possibly uh, right down here, we will add an edit link. Okay, so let's go into views, notes, show. And here's where we delete the note, but you know what? We might even move that to the edit section. Let's hide the sidebar. But yeah, right here, we'd have something like an anchor tag that will go to note slash edit, and we'll call it edit. Okay, it's not gonna look pretty, but if I give it a refresh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, ideally I'd like, well, let's think about this actually. Maybe when I click on the edit link, here is where a delete action should be located. So if that's the plan, I can switch back here and delete this. Or actually I'll copy so we can save it for later. And then uh, I will remove it from this view. Okay, next, why don't we do, hmm. Let's add a footer and add it here and then add a little margin top. Mm -hmm. And then why don't we style this as a button? Uh, so maybe we'll give it, I don't know, a text gray 500. Yeah. And then I'll do a border of the, uh, the current color. So a border that is also gray of 500. And I'm sorry, I should also just come along for the ride if you're not familiar with Tailwind. So we have a border and then I'll give it some padding on the left and right and a little less on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll make it rounded. And yeah, maybe a little less padding. And yeah, just, just something simple to get us going. Okay, so now if I click on this, um, we can edit the note. But yeah, really this isn't right, of course, because I don't see the note here. So if I'm editing a specific note, I have to fetch the specific node. And to fetch a specific node, I need to know what node we are working with. So just like when we show a node, when I click on the edit link, we need to include the ID of the node that we wish to edit. So again, right now we are, we are passing that through as part of the query string. So we'll do something like this, note ID. And uh, let's give that a shot. Okay, come back, give it a refresh. And now when I click on the edit button, there we go. We are editing a note and specifically the note that has an ID of 39. All right, next step is to track that down. So we will go into our edit controller. And yeah, actually, if you want, we can just steal some of the code we wrote in the show action. So stuff like, uh, really a lot of this. 
Because yeah, if you think about it, so much of your controller action logic revolves around uh, finding things, validating things, authorizing things. So um, they will often be somewhat similar. So I'm gonna paste all of that in and notice my editor will automatically import those classes. But if you're in something like Visual Studio Code, you might have to do that manually. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're gonna track down the corresponding note. That should all be the same. If we couldn't find the note, then we abort with a 404. We then authorize that the, um, the current user, which we're still hard coding for one more episode, uh, we're authorizing that that user has access to view and edit this note. Because otherwise, if we didn't have this, then anyone could access that edit uh, URI to tweak your note, which of course we don't want to allow. So we have to, to implement authorization at every level here. Okay, otherwise, if we did find the note, we can pass that through here. Okay, cool. So now if we go to the edit action, think about it, where we have the text area, you know, right here, I can replace this with uh, the, the body of the note. So note body. All right, cross your fingers, come back, give it a refresh, and there we go. Okay, but now think about it. What if I change my mind and I want to cancel? Well, I probably need a cancel button right here. Okay, so let's go back to our editor. And let's see right down here. And you know what it looks like uh, when we use that Tailwind uh, layout, they already had some nice styling for a button. And again, I know this is a big mess and you might think, why would you ever wanna repeat this over and over? Don't forget, when you're actually building applications, there are ways to isolate these things. You could extract um, the button into its own component. You could create a dedicated CSS class like button where you apply all of these. There are many different ways to tackle these things. But again, utility classes and Tailwind just aren't part uh, of this series. But we have plenty at Laracast if you wanna learn more. So anyways, right up here, why don't we duplicate this, but swap it out to an anchor tag. And then I'll say, this will take you back to all of the notes. And then we'll just say cancel. And then the only thing I wanna do here is change the background to gray of 500. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, just something like that. And you know what, why don't we even add a little more of a gap between those items. Yeah, and then let's just do justify end. So I'm just applying a display of flex box. I'm pushing all of the items to the end of the row, and then I'm adding a little gap between each of the children, and then we get something like that. Okay, so now if I click on cancel, it takes me back to viewing all of the notes. Okay, perfect. So yeah, you can see now we have a little inconsistency because we created our dummy uh, styling for that button. So what I'm gonna do is copy all of that, go back to our show view, and then I will update this so that we can be a little more consistent. Perfect. Okay, so now think about it. When I make a change here to the notes, well, I should be able to save, or why don't we instead call it update? So right here, we can say update. But when I click on that, what should happen? Where should the form submit? Okay, well, again, if we're following RESTful conventions, let's have a look. We're gonna go into our routes file. And yeah, right here, we could say, well, if we make a patch request to a specific note, that should update it. So why don't we do this? Router, listen for a patch request to slash notes, and that will hit a controller called update. Okay, and this will be our last uh, resourceful controller. We'll call it update.php. And once again, we are just gonna say updating um, to confirm that we are hitting this controller. I do this all the time. Are we actually hitting this file or not? It's just a small little step that, that can save you some time. Okay, so let's make sure that when we edit a note and we submit the form right up here, it submits the uh, appropriate request. It's now gonna visit slash note. And remember, browsers do not support patch and delete requests. And you can see uh, it's not going to allow that. But as we learned a number of episodes ago, we can now sneak it in by creating an input that is hidden, that has a unique name of underscore method, 
and a value that is equal to the request type that we actually want our code to, to treat the request as. So in this case, I'm saying, all right, well, I actually want you to treat this as a patch request. Our router will detect this and then route accordingly, right? So let's see, uh, I think this is probably right. Let's come back to the browser, give it a refresh and click update. And there we go. We have responded to that patch request and loaded the appropriate controller. Cool. Okay, so now let's think about it. What needs to happen here when we uh, hit this controller? And why don't we write it out as comments? Well, first, uh, let's find the corresponding note, right? Uh, then maybe authorize that the current user uh, can edit the note. And then we should probably validate the form. So for example, if you try to edit the note, but maybe you don't include anything or you include too much, uh, well, that should trigger a validation error, in which case we should return here and provide you some feedback. Okay, so validate the form. Uh, and then if no validation errors, update the record in the notes database table. Right? These are basically the steps that we need to do here. Okay, let's get going. And once again, I can steal some of this code that we have here. So let's go into updates, find the corresponding note. So we have that right here. Select star from notes where the ID, but yeah, in this case we have a post request. So maybe we should pass through the notes ID as part of the form. That would be one way to do it. Okay, so if that's the case, we need to return here and add another hidden input called ID, where the value is equal to the ID of the note that we wish to update. Again, this is one way that we could tackle it. Later, I'll show you how to include the identifier as part of the URI. But for now, we'll keep it as a hidden input. Okay, so back to our controller. Try to track down the notes. Uh, let's then authorize that the current user can edit the note. So once again, authorize that the notes user ID equals the current user ID. Next, we want to validate the form. So we will create a list of errors. And then let's just show you right here where we did it a number of episodes ago. We'll just steal this to save some time. Paste it in. All right, so that will automatically import our validator. And we can say, all right, we're gonna validate that the body, uh, that text area, meets our criteria. And again, notice as I'm doing this, this is one pain point that we might wanna solve. We are now repeating validation logic. So I can see here, for example, that the body for a note can be no more than a thousand characters. But I also declare that logic here. So you can imagine situations where it becomes out of sync. For this form, your body logic is different than for that form. So yeah, these are things I want you to think about where you have little pain points and little pieces of duplication that could eventually become out of sync if you're not careful. So in your head, I want you to be thinking about what could I possibly do to normalize that, to isolate it so that I only perform this validation logic or whatever the logic happens to be in a single point. Okay, that's something to think about. But for now, we will keep the uh, duplication. One thing at a time, right? All right, so finally, if there are no validation errors, or another way to think of it is, well, if we do have validation errors, then we need to reload that form. So for now, I'm just going to return the view. But again, later, we will learn about uh, a process where if validation fails, you redirect to um, a specific controller. But again, we're not quite there yet because we haven't yet talked about uh, sessions and things like that and flash messages. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to return the view directly. So once again, note slash edit dot view dot PHP. I'm gonna send, excuse me, I'm gonna send through the errors. I will once again send through the heading, but again, we have some duplication there, which is annoying. And then once again, we will pass through the corresponding uh, note. All right, so this is what we get. Otherwise, if there are no validation errors, we can update the record. So we can just run an update query, db query. And here's how we can write that. 
update the notes table, and I'm going to set the body of the note equal to whatever body we have uh, in the bound parameter, but which one? Well, I can say where the ID of the note equals, and once again, another parameter. Okay, so the ID I care about is post uh, ID, and the body will be the, the body that the user typed into that text area, like so. Okay, finally, we're all done here. So the last step would be redirect the user. All right, so why don't we, for now, just redirect them back to all of the notes. So I can say header, location equals notes, and then we're done here, so I can die. And yeah, I want you to notice a few pain points as we worked on this. Uh, as you'll find later, once you graduate to certain frameworks, we can simplify so much of this logic. Things like this, uh, error handling, checking for errors, there are ways that we could simplify that uh, dramatically. There are ways to remove this duplication. Obviously, in real life, you're not hard coding the current user. So just keep in mind, there are further ways that we can simplify this uh, quite a bit. All right, let's give this a shot in the browser. So I'll give it a refresh. Here's our note, and I'll say has been updated. We update it. Oh, and it just worked. We didn't even have a mistake there. So I click on it, and that's what we have in the database. Let's confirm it. If I switch over to table plus, there we go. Okay, but now what happens if I switch back if we fail uh, the validation? And just to make this a little easier on me, uh, why don't we make the validator, like if it's more than 10 characters, something that will instantly uh, trigger a validation error. Okay, well now this alone would trigger an error. So I, let's do this gibberish here. If I update it, all right, well, we have a couple of things here. Yes, we do see the validation error. And remember, we got that for free because uh, we copied our view. So you'll see right here, just to make sure we're all on the same page. We already had this check from our create form where we say, all right, well, if there is an error for the body, then let's display it as part of a paragraph tag. But also I want you to notice that this is kind of annoying, potentially annoying. You type in something here, it does trigger a validation error, but when we update it, it reverts back to what you originally had. And there might be situations where you want that, but usually you don't want that. But I'm gonna hold off on fixing this again until we learn a little bit more about sessions. Okay, so just hold tight on that one. Uh, otherwise though, our validation does seem to be working just fine. If I tweak something that, that kills the validation, well, we don't update the database at all. Instead, we return to the form and we provide the user with a bit of feedback. So this seems to be working uh, pretty well. Okay, and then further, um, if we try to edit this, but uh, the authorization fails, and we can test this out by just manually updating this like that. Well, now the current user has a different ID so we try to authorize it and we see, wait a minute, the current user did not write this note, so they do not have permission to update the note, in which case we will, uh, we will forbid it as you see here. Okay, so all of that seems to be protected. All right, and I think that completes our first resource. Okay, you know what? I want you to really focus on the conventions that we're following here. If you can, try to adopt them. And maybe that means taking out a sheet of paper right now and copying these down so you don't forget. So index will show all of a resource. Give me all notes. Um, show will show me a specific note. Um, create will show me a form to create a new note. Store will be what we hit after you submit that create form. So this is responsible for storing the note, for persisting the note. Uh, what else do we have here? Edit shows a form to edit a note. Update is where that edit form will submit. So that controller is responsible for updating uh, a specific note. And then of course, destroy is responsible for destroying the note, uh, removing it from the database. So notice these conventions are being followed here in each of our controller names. And then we also mostly adopt that as part of our URI. The only thing that's missing here is really rather than slash notes, we would do something like slash notes 
slash, and then some kind of ID. And then when you update it, you would hit that as well. But we haven't yet talked about uh, routing wildcards, and that's the only reason why we haven't adopted this. But um, we can talk about that in the future. All right, and yeah, that does it for your first initial CRUD app. And by the way, if you're not familiar with that term, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And that's exactly what we've done here. And yeah, if you think about it, so many of the things, so many of the tools on the internet really do break down to simple CRUD operations. For example, with our notes, create a note, read a note, show me the notes, uh, update that note, or delete this note. Uh, what about a to-do app? Create a to-do, show me my to-dos, delete this to-do. Uh, what about uh, invoice, uh, maybe an invoicing app? Create a new invoice, update the invoice, show me all my invoices, delete this one. Again, so many things break down this simple uh, CRUD applications, and that's why we reviewed it here. Okay, but now, finally, in the next episode, we begin a brand new section where we can discuss uh, session handling and authentication. I hope you're excited. Stay tuned.